All right, we're made it to exam three. Let's talk about what you might see on that exam. Here's your exam three review summary. So what have we covered since the last test? Okay, we covered number one, chapter nine, which was over centroids. Okay, so what kind of questions could you possibly get from this chapter on centroids? Well, we did, we did composite shapes. Okay. That's where we had all those areas with different shapes, and we, we did even volumes with different shapes, and you had to go and find the centroid of all those. We use our, our table method on that. Do you remember the table method? I like the table method. All right. So that's one thing you could do. You could also use centroids uh, by calculus. Okay. There's several videos to review on that. The centroids by calculus, where we had uh, x bar was equal to the integral of x dA over the integral dA, right? And up here, and you can put y bar or z bar in there as well. And up here was the uh, x bar was equal to the sum of the x a's over the sum of the a's, right? And you could change the a for volume or length or weight or mass or whatever, right? Uh, the next thing in the centroid chapter we did was the theorems of Pappus, Goldinus, okay, and the theorems of Pappus, Goldinus, there's two of them, surface area equals theta, R bar L, and volume is equal to theta, R bar A, okay, those are some things that we need to review. So there's three kinds of questions that can come out of that chapter. Um, and whatever doesn't show up on test three, you can pretty much expect it to show up on the final, right? Okay, so that's chapter nine over centroids. Then chapter, then we went back to chapter seven, which was internal forces. Okay. This is where we, we picked up a little bit of distributed loads back there in chapter four, right? We did some distributed loads. All right, and then from this guy, right, we did those internal forces. Every time you cut a beam, you must have an M and V, right? That's when we had to find the bending moment, the normal force, and the shear force at any point. Okay. Had to find M and V at any point, or what if I ask you to find it at every point? We had to do shear moment diagrams. Okay, we did lots of shear moment diagrams, and under shear moment diagrams, there was two ways to do those. Number one, the graphic method. Okay. And you remember the other one? That was not your favorite, but here we go. Equation method. So the graphic method and the equation method, we need to review those. And then finally, we just got finished with chapter eight. And chapter eight has a little bit of friction. Okay, so what kind of friction problems do we need to study to get ready for that? Well, there's, number one, there's simple friction. And simple friction is just like the box on a plane, right? It's sliding on an inclined plane. Or a ladder leaning up against a wall, right? That's another classic kind of simple friction problem. Okay, and we had, in here we had the uh, friction is equal is fun, right? We had friction is fun. Can you have a mu sub k in friction problems? The answer is yes, but it has to be moving at constant velocity, okay? But most of the time you're going to use mu sub s. Um, how about this? I really like these problems, wink, wink. Slipping, tipping, okay? That was the ones where we said, find whether the force that there were motion will occur, right? And you had to like, oh, is it gonna slide? Is it gonna tip? 
Is the whole thing going to slide? Is part of it going to slide, right? You had to come up with all those scenarios, and then you had to test those scenarios to see which one would happen first, right? Really like that stuff. And then there was friction wedge problems. Okay, and we also did some belt friction. Okay, so there's your friction. So there's your, there's your problems, right? Chapter 9, chapter 7, and then chapter 8. Okay, so there's your exam 3. You'll get five questions from this material here. That's what we've talked about so far. That's a summary of those chapters. Now, following this video, you're going to find five more videos that is example problem 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 that I feel are what I would put on exam number three. So I'm going to work five more sample problems that would I would put on exam three. So if you want to do that, work them with me. Hey, don't just watch them, okay? Remember, don't just watch them. Push pause, work them. You should be able to work them at this point in the game, right? And then just skip to the end of the video and see if you got the same answer. And if you get stuck, go back and see what the little fat guy does and see where he, you know, how he does it so you can figure it out. But at this point in the game, you should be pushing pause, working that problem with me, and then going back and see if you got the right answer. Okay, so use those videos in the right way, and you will make 100 on your next exam. Okay, example problem videos coming up next. Here we go.